environment controls behavior and genes via the nervous system. And I go, well, that's cool. But then what did I leave out? And the answer is this. I left out mind. I go, what's mind? Interpretation of the signals. So the nervous system picks up a signal, but the mind says, that's a good signal, that's a bad signal, I should do this and do that. I say, that's an interpretation of a signal. So then the nervous system doesn't send straight information environment to cells. It sends information to consciousness. Consciousness interprets the signal, and then consciousness causes the brain to relieve, release chemistry to stay you know, surviving in that world of change. So all of a sudden, it's the interpretation of the mind that determines the chemistry of the blood. And the chemistry of the blood determines behavior and genetics. So all of a sudden, I say, your mind is sending the signals. Now, I'll give you an example of that. And it comes back to the very simple fact. I told you about your perceptions. I say, well, if your perceptions are right, then your mind did the right interpretation, and then you're living in harmony. But if you have a misperception of the signals, then you're going to adjust the cells out of harmony. And that's where illness starts to come in, a misperception of reading what's going on in my world around me. And this is why I call it biology of belief. Why? Your perceptions will shape your biology whether the perceptions are accurate or not accurate. It's still controlled by your perceptions. So it's your belief that is controlling your biology. Okay? So I said, well, how does it work? And here's the beautiful part. Here's a brain. The brain is the chemist. It determines what information is carried in that blood, what nutrition is carried, what, what kind of emotional chemicals are carried, what kind of regulatory chemicals that are in there to regulate your body. The brain puts it in. Now look how this works, because this is the nature of life. You ready? You close your eyes, and when you open them, you see someone you love. I go, love? Oh, that releases a bunch of wonderful chemicals. Dopamine, pleasure, yes, when you're in love, I feel pleasure. That's a chemical going in the blood telling you that this is great, okay? It releases oxytocin. The brain releases oxytocin. What's that? Well, that's another chemical that tells your body to bond with that source of love. It also releases another chemical, vasopressin. That makes you more attractive so your partner stays with you. And the more important one is the bottom. Growth hormone does exactly what it says. I say, so why is it relevant? When people fall in love, they live in pleasure, they bond to their loved one, and guess what? They glow, they're healthy. Oh, look how in love they are, see how they glow. I say the glow isn't an accident. The glow is signals of information coming from the brain that says respond to that perception with this. And all of a sudden you say, oh yeah, the blood of a person in love really encourages vitality and joy and everything. Now I go back and I say, the very same person opens up their eyes and sees something that scares them. I say, oh, fear? Oh, in fear, I don't release love chemicals. I change the chemistry of my blood. By what? I put in stress hormones such as cortisol nor epinephrine, another stress hormone involved. I put in things called cytokines, which regulate the immune system, and histamine, which regulates many things in your body. I go, the chemistry of fear is completely different than the chemistry of love. The response of the cells in love is completely different <laughs> to the response of the cells in fear. And I say, so what was the result of this? And I say, your vision of the world is sending chemistry that complements your vision. Are you a happy, healthy person looking into the world that this is my place, I'm so happy to be here? Or you wake up in the morning and go, oh crap, I gotta go live through this stuff again all day, it's like bothering me, I'm stressed out. I go, two different blood chemistries, two different culture medium. I go, what's the relevance? Go back to the plastic dish. It's the culture medium that determined the genetics and the fate of the cell. Now I'm coming back and give you a very simple point. It's your perception of the world is translated into complementary chemistry, which is then released into your body so that your body complements the world you perceive. If you're in love, you have a whole completely different healthy attitude because the blood is really supporting you. But if you're in fear, the chemistry of that will shut you down. Growth is being open to the system. Protection is closing to the system. 
You can't be open and closed at the same time. I say, why is that relevant? Your life experiences will determine whether you're in growth or whether you're in protection. Gaia Sphere Event Center, Bruce Lipton, The Grand Convergence, 